So, yeah, this is. Um, oh, Jefferson, do you want to introduce? Or I, I was start? going through, but right. if you want to start, if you want to start directly, it's your right. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> today we have the last of our presentations. The next presentations are going to be given by. Uh, by the participants themselves and showing what they, they managed to achieve um, with ALF tomorrow. And so that's the, the last presentation we give, um, we as the organizers give it to you. And that's going to be Jonas talking about the latest um, and more advanced um, possibilities with Pi ALF. Thank you, Jonas. Yeah, so um, yeah, thank you, uh, Jefferson. Yeah, so this is. Yeah, I'm gonna to sh show you a bit what what uh, what you can do with PyAlf, some of the features with of PyAlf, and to give a bit of a continu continuity with my talks, um, I'm basically using the same model I used. Uh, I, in I showed how to implement yesterday, and actually finished uh, managed to to get rid of all the bugs uh, after that. <laughs> for the people who stayed there, uh, they witnessed it. Um, anyway, um, yeah, this is actually uh, um, what you see here is a Jupyter lab. Um, so I exited access this here, here uh, through my browser, and it's actually not running um, on my laptop right here, but actually on my on my desktop in the office, and I'm using it through an uh, SSH port forwarding. So if you're interested in that, I can also um, expand on that um, after the talk or so. Um, so um, yeah, so I'm, yeah, show here. So the, the talk has basically two parts. The first part is running ALF through PyALF and the second part is um, post-processing data. Um, um yeah produced by alf and so yeah just going through this this notebook um so the first step are some some imports so yeah these you should you're probably familiar with if you work with PyAlf. and there's also um i'm also um importing a function for pretty printing and then um when creating this alf source i'm using a non-default branch so i'm checking out another a git branch um, if you're not familiar with it, with this is also no no problem but what i'm basically i'm, I'm switching from the from the default the branch which, which is the master branch to um, this branch which has um, this, the pneumatic direct hamiltonian i showed yesterday um, implemented it's actually like with a bit more features and stuff but yeah so i can i guess i can perhaps even restart the kernel so that everything happens in real time so now i the first execution will be this import here you see here the one that's a freshly started python kernel we have here and now i'm i start um getting the, this, this ALF source. What's also um, uh, um, important is um, what's like a common, um, I don't say caveat perhaps, um, is that um, for, for PyALF to, fin to find ALF, um, you should have this environment where variable ALF gear set in your shell where you started, for example, this Jupyter notebook. Otherwise it will, look in your local directory for this um for, for for alf or it will clone it new and then you will have like different copies from alf uh, scattered all around this will be chaotic and everything so and then um i'm going to use uh, one feature of this alf source object you perhaps haven't seen yet is um i can ask him what kind of um hamiltonians are implemented and here you can see, apart from the Hamilt from the Hamiltonians um, that are present on the master, you also have this pneumatic direct Hamiltonian. And I can also ask it, um, which uh, what are the default parameters set, for example, for this Hamiltonian? And I'm I'm pretty printing it because it's a 
pretty large object and um, to look at it in a nice way I'm using this pretty print function and yeah there you can see like here at the beginning is the uh, one nematic Dirac name list which is the Hamiltonian specific name list with all sorts of different um, parameters and then uh, there are also the, um, the the default or like the parameters which are always for for every run for every alt the same uh, for every Hamiltonian the same which are the QMC parameters and some other parameters for the post processing and for the tempering and um, yeah and um, then um, I did run uh, uh, a series of, of simulations. So for this, I created, so here I create actually not only one simulation object, but a list of simulation objects. So um, this is with this um, so-called um, Python list comp uh, comprehension, I can create a list of um, something in a very convenient way. So if I execute this, I see that this sims uh, uh, four I called it is a list of four instances of this simulation object. Here's just a, a simple um, example of how this um, list comprehension work. So basically you say you have something in the beginning you want to put a few times in the list and in the at, at the end you have like um, a loop. So it's similar to, um, it's just like all in one. So you have at, at the front and at the beginning, the, the square brackets you use for lists in, uh, in, in, in Python. And uh, then you can create with this very nice notation in my, in my point of view and very compact notation, a list, for example, here is just a list of strings. Um, where basically um, I have for each um, loop uh, iteration, I create, um, I put this object, which is a string inside this list. And here I have like this object, with, which is this simulation object um, inside the string and uh, in, inside this list, like four times with different values for age which is um, for our um, uh, for our nematic Dirac um, Hamiltonian, this is the tuning parameter for the quantum phase transition. So yeah, what we are investigating is basically a, a, a quantum phase transition and this H is the tuning parameters. And so I'm doing a scan over this H the transverse field. And yeah, and then I can, um, simulate this. I can also look um, at, like, as you also um, probably know, experienced it, uh, that um, this um, PyAlf automatically um, sets up directory names for your simulations generated out of these parameters you give. So only the model specific parameters, not these QMC parameters. And um, they are all in this in this directly alpha data. And here it's just a glimpse on, or here's just a look with, with get directories. You can see um, how these uh, yeah these directories are called. Then before first running you, uh, um, alpha, you need to compile it, which I won't do right now because it will take a, a lot of time, especially since I'm using here not uh, the default uh, GNU compiler, but the Intel compiler, which um, I think, yeah, which takes a bit longer in compiling, compiling but on the other hand, it's, um, it's faster when, when running. And um, yeah, then I have a loop here um, over all the objects of these Sims L4, over all the, the elements in this list. And for each one, I run it one time and then here I have one, 
two, three, four times um, Alf. Uh, yeah, I've, I've running four times. And um, after that, also, um, I think you've yeah, heard a few times or, uh, already of this info file. It um, makes sense to look at this. And for example, like with this member function of the simulation object, you can look at the info files. And here I can see that um, the stabilization is actually um, very good. So this is between 10 to the minus 14 and 10 to minus 15, which actually means I could increase uh, the stabilization interval um, a bit. Um, so the, the distance of the number of times uh, um, um, slices between stabilization, I could increase here a bit, which will uh, reduce the, the stability. So increase this number, but which, which um, will speed up my code. And since this is like much smaller numbers than 10 to the minus 10, I could increase and wrap to get some faster simulations. Yeah, um, I also did some more simulations for bigger system sizes. Here I demonstrate another feature of ALF and PyALF, which is parallel tempering. Um, it's actually um, like a way of simulating uh, used to overcome some sampling issues. But here I'm, I'm just abusing it basically to run multiple simulations um, of di with different parameters in, in parallel. And to get a parallel tempering, this um, simdict, which um, this argument simdict to simulation, which is usually just this dictionary, um, if, I, if I make it a list, then PyAlf will automatically switch to parallel tempering mode. And then for each element of this list, it will run one um, parameter set of simulations and they will run in parallel. And they can also exchange um, configurations, but this is just a side note. So um, parallel tempering is, is a feature for the, uh, how does, as Farka said it once, it's a feature for the desperate if you don't know anything else, like in, in, in terms, at least in terms of its how the original intention were, it was, as I said, yeah, in this case. Uh, there's, a que there's a question in the chat. You want me to read yeah. it to you or can you see? Um, um, I can tell you. So me, it's, can yeah, mm -hmm. it's just uh, if you, in this notebook, if you specify it, a separate uh, output directory, uh, default one, since um, someone noticed, uh, Joe noticed ah, um, that the scratch, uh, uh, yeah. No, no, um, Scratch is in this case, um, just the name of, uh, of of basically a local drive. So it's not nothing that gets removed. Um, uh, it's just a local drive that I don't, yeah. Like it's it's not similar to the Scratch, um, um, uh, similar to the Scratch directory of the, so no, I, di I didn't change anything. I could, okay. um, we will see this in a moment. Basically, yeah, it uh, should be. I actually haven't tried it, but I think, um, yeah, I, I get back to this. Um, um, All right. So, um, yeah, uh, where was I? Um, I interrupted so, you when you were talking about about the original purpose of the tempering, which I yes, here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, original purpose of the tempering is um, to overcome sampling issues, but I won't expand on this anymore because it's another sub subject altogether. So this is just, um, I'm abusing this to run multiple uh, simulations in parallel. And this is basically just to demonstrate that um, you can also start parallel tempering runs um, with PyAlf. So executing this, I get um, one simulation object, but this one simulation object has um, multiple, basically, run directories. Or it's, yeah, we can, um, I haven't, uh, if I just type here, sim l6 dot get directories. So it has, 
basically in, 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 in tempering, you have one root directory and multiple like um, child directories, you could say, where this um, for, for each um, parameter set. And here you have this one root directory and then temp uh, zero to three for the parallel tempering um, parameters. Um, yeah, here again, look at the um, info file. You can also again see that we are uh, very stable and could increase the um, NREP. And yeah, here I also, the same I did for L equals six, I did for L equals eight and L equals 10, just um, yeah, for the, to get some data later to, to analyze in the second part. And here, um, in this example, um, I'm showing, um, so he, here I'm, I'm uh, switching um, again back to, to just a normal MPI run without parallel tempering. I'm, I'm creating a list of simulations, but in this case, like it's a 20, 20, a 20 by 20 simulations, which is uh, much too big for like a little office machine, at least if I want to do really get somewhat nice um, results. So um, what I'm, uh, uh, this is to, to demonstrate here. Um, yeah, there we get uh, back to, to the, the question earlier. I can overwrite this, um, what, should, what is, what, what is uh, here previously, this ALF data. Um, and um, this is called, this is the, the um, the argument sim root, and here I just called it pneumatic Dirac L20. And um, so I, I also, since I'm switching back from parallel tempering to um, without parallel tempering, I would have to recompile. As I said, I don't compile right now. And here um, I can do this run commands. There are two optional, um, there are two options. The first one is to copy the binary. So usually the alf.out just stays um, in, the, uh, in the directory where I started everything. Um, um, in the alt directory, I mean. But here it's, uh, it can, can copies, it can be copied to the, um, to the, the actually some actual uh, um, simulation of, um, directory and this only prep, prep mean, means that basically it creates like the parameters file and the seeds file, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't start to run. So this is suitable for if you want to use ALF to not, um, in, uh, to, um, to, to ALF to not start to run, but to prepare to run and to start to run with something else, for example, uh, a, a scheduler or something. And here we can then take a look at, so as I said, I overwrote this ALF data with pneumatic direct.l20. Um, and now in this pneumatic direct dot, dot, and I also wrote, overwrote this default um, behavior that I use, um, uh, create the sim dir out of the parameters. I basically gave it my own name, which is just age and the value of age. And yeah, here's, so, and perhaps I, I'm not sure how I implement it exactly, but if I say, say here a sim root, for example, this, let's see whether it, yeah. So for with this, I can, if I give here an absolute directory, I can change um, the run directory. So here now it's not, not running on scratch, but it's running on home pneumatic direct L20. And then, yeah, it just created here the, the directory. So this here, I can switch the directory um, where the, the, the ALF, where, where it stores, it's, it, it, it runs, it runs. So, okay, this is what was the first part. Um, the second part is, um, post-processing the data I recovered. This part actually doesn't use any 
um, source code of um, of the ALF repository. So it, for this one, actually doesn't even need to to clone ALF if one already has the the bins and the data. So um, I first, um, yeah, I use from this uh, from the utils um, module of of the PyAlf package. I use the find symbols to um, so I I don't like uh, yeah this will automatically find um, directories with um, where uh, it contains this data dot h5 file which is the the file uh, the the hd5 file with all the simulation results and um, uh, put it out for you for me in a in a list. And I use this as um, as a list of directories, um, which contains the data I want to analyze. And um, but before analyzing data, I want to uh, define some some custom observables. I call them. I can also call them derived observables. So um, basically, um, I can um, give um, I can define some functions. Um, that take uh, observables from uh, like like the lattice or scalar type observables um, and um, analyze them, and then um, this way I I can give then this um, this definitions of this derived observables directly to the analy analysis routine, routine and it will do the check knife error analysis for me, which is very convenient. So here's an example for um, for a correlation ratio. So this is these are the um, uh, these are the variables the uh, analysis an analysis routine will give um, to the function. If I uh, probably I should start here. I just realized. So. Um, Basically, um, I can give uh, the analysis um, routine a dictionary um, um, of, of definitions of custom observables. And um, each of those, like each entry of, the, of this dictionary, the name is the name of the new observable. Um, and uh, it contains another dictionary with um needs is um some observables it needs for example this is the equal time correlation of the icing of the easing spins and um this will be funneled into this function and i won't i, I don't give any uh, keyword arguments for example um i could overwrite this ks um with this keyword arguments down here and now uh, these are the um, the, um, the variables handed over to RK um, if I specify here a lattice type observable, like for example this equal time correlation or the time displaced correlation function. And this is the the um, yeah the the correlation function like with here the 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 size of the um the, here's the the, the um which it, it this, this index iterates over over all um elements of the private letters and this um this index is over the, all the time slices in case it's a time displaced observable otherwise this is just basically one single index and these are the two um, observe, um, orbitals and here again I have also the background but I usually don't need this because here the background is already automatically uh, subtracted here's this here we also have the sign and here again this uh, number of orbitals number of time slices um, in imaginary time step and here um, a lattice object which is very similar to the Bravi lattice like this is a Bravi lattice object, 
which is very similar to the lab lattice object um, we used, uh, like we, we, we have in, in ALF. Yeah, and this defines um, like a correlation ratio like this, which is an RG invariant quantity. And since the time gets a bit um, tight, I won't expand on this anymore. Here, I also define a binder cumulant and here a susceptibility. So here, another thing, like these are uh, the variables handed over if I take a lattice type observables, if I take a scalar observables, um, these are the observ these are the variables that hand handed hand over. So here are the, this this opswec, uh, which we we saw yesterday in the observables and the sign and the, 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 the this, this is the length of this one of, of this object. And yeah, here I can define the custom. Here I, I write them all in the dictionary. And then um, I can use this um, analysis routine, which is basically the same analysis routine, which used by simulation.analysis, but here it's like in its as a standalone function. And I give it a directory, the custom observables, and uh, the um, uh, symmetry specification, which I which I give um, in a second, and I can run it. Here I also specified always like tr equals true that something that is already analyzed will be analyzed again and change in case I changed, for example, the custom observables. I have to specify this. Now um, I skipped uh, one part here which is um, um, some functions to, to check the, the warm up and the, the um, autocorrelation, which is um, very um, important. Uh, the thing actually to, to take care of um, when doing Monte Carlo. So um, one thing is that if you start your Monte Carlo run, your configuration is usually not in equilibrium yet. So you have to um, skip a, a number of, of bins. And the question is how many bins you have to, to skip. And um, here this with this function, you can plot basically explicitly your the time evolution of your bins. And here you, you give it a number of directories, um, the name of the observables you want to, to check for, and um, this um, specifier of custom observables, if you want to also check custom observables. So here I'm checking um, like uh, um, some correlation ratio and uh, binder ratio and uh, um, susceptibility, which are custom observables. So I had to specify this custom ops. I also want to have the the nice GUI which works within the Jupyter Notebook. So I have to uh, hand over this IPI. And then I can browse here through the different uh, parameter sets. And I can see like in this case, it's enough to, to skip one bin because it's, it thermalizes quite quickly um, compared to a, to a bin size. But uh, let's see. Uh, I think we here, yeah, here we have an example where um, like here you can uh, change the number of skips, which gets uh, 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 like if I change here, this end skip, it, get auto, it get, gets automatically updated in the parameters file. And here, for example, um, end skip equals four is a bit too, too small because here it's, it's not uh, warmed up yet. So I have to increase to end skip equals eight and then so I have to skip the first eight bins to see it uh, that it is thermalized. Um, yeah here's also a log of the things I, I did here basically. I just collapse this and there is a very similar widget with basically which basically say, takes the well, which takes the same arguments. Um, called uh, check ribbon where I 
um, plot on the y-axis the errors of the um, of the observables, and on the x-axis the number of, of rebinning steps. So how many bins I recombine into one bin before I do the anal error analysis. Because if the end bin is too small, or if the size of one bin is too small, I underestimate the errors. And here I can um, change the end bin to um, to not underestimate the errors and not um, yeah if the autocorrelation that to to control the autocorrelation. Yeah, there's also a lock here. I can clear the lock or I can just collapse it. And um, one last step before the analysis, there is also a feature to um, symmetrize correlation functions. Um, for example, the spin-spin correlation or things like that. Um, and the, uh, for this, I have a list of um, of symmetry operations, including the unity. This takes um, like an, an index um, of the um, Bravier uh, lattice. So this this run this index runs over the um, the, the number um, the the um, unit cells. And here I can, yeah, define symmetry operations. So I have to have the like here, for example, as the two symmetry, and I'm defining here, which is, of course, the unity and the rotation by 180 degrees or uh, by pi. And um, if I add this here, so this uh, defines a um, C2 symmetry. And if I give this to the analysis um, function, it will um, symmetrize all the um, all the correlation function to a C two symmetry. Yeah, and um, then here's um, this uh, load. Yeah, yeah just, I think I'm just out so of that time. Know, uh, yeah, um, the time will be over. I think we can you can try to wrap up things. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So here's the um, load uh, load results uh, uh, um, function, which is which does the same or which is the function um, the uh, simulation get ops is based on. And here I, I give it I give it this list of directories I just created in the very beginning, and I load the results from all of these directories into one. Pandas data frame. So for each row, um, each row corresponds to one simulation. And then I have in the columns here first the parameters and then um, all sorts of different, uh, different uh, service results. And then I can plot, for example, here. The correlation, um, the order parameter, or here um, correlation function with cross at the critical point, and here with this very few data points, I can attempt the data collapse, which actually doesn't look so bad considering I just spend a few CPU hours on this. And yeah, here are some some other details how I. Um, access um, these this data frame basically and here I'm plotting just the um, the the spin spin correlation which just has a peak at zero zero because I'm very deep um, for this parameter uh, I'm looking at I'm very deep in the ferro, uh, ferromagnetic uh, phase here I'm a slit here I'm not in the ferromagnetic phase so I'm only see a small deep, uh, peak here and I guess that's it. <laughs> okay, so, thank, thank you. you very much, Venice. Um, are there questions? I'd have one myself. Um, when you do this data collapse, um, are you quickly implementing it there, or is it something that's part of PyAlf? Yeah, I'm, I'm quickly implementing that. It's it's just a like it's not a 
um, numerical data collapse. I'm just um, I'm just rescaling the x-axis um, by l to the power of a, so a and and like instead of I'm I'm plotting here h minus hc times l to the power of of a, um, and a is one over new in yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a simple plot. So it's a manual data collapse. Yeah. Mm, cool. Any more questions? If there aren't any more questions, then we should head for our uh, short break and um, at around in around 